Russell Westbrook could easily be perceived as one of the hardest-headed individuals you might find. I admire him because he plays so hard. I do, I love that. But he is so self-absorbed. He's still too much of a solo act. I wouldn't want to coach Russell Westbrook. I love how hard he plays. I would not enjoy coaching him because you know what? In the end, is he a winning player? Russell Westbrook's crazy, and he's one of the worst three-point shooters in the league. Russell said he had no friend, and Kevin Durant said, you know what? I'm not your friend. Only friend you got is that basketball. He's a delusional ball hog. No great player wants to play with him. Paul George has said, I'd rather play for the crappy Lakers. If you did not see the game, Russell Westbrook had the worst quarter in NBA history. <laughs> What's at stake for for us. His reputation. He has a reputation of, of a stat stuffer. Not a winner, a stat stuffer. Russell Westbrook's a stat patter in the regular season. He's gonna win awards. He's not built for the playoffs. Anyway, what's up guys? Mike here and today, yes, we are talking Russell Westbrook and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure to subscribe right now if you haven't already because I'm making a ton of videos next week. There are going to be trade videos, draft videos, free agency videos. The content is going to be endless. You're not going to want to miss a single video. So again, make sure to subscribe. But for now, there was a time when Russell Westbrook was seen as a winner. In the 2011 season, with a 22-year-old KD, a 22-year-old Russ, and a 21-year-old James Harden, the Oklahoma City Thunder reached the Western Conference Finals in just Russ's third season and his first All-Star year. The very next season, the Thunder made it all the way to the NBA Finals before losing to the Heat, and at this point, no one was hating on Russ. He was the second best player on the best team in the West, a team that seemingly had unlimited potential. But then, of course, came the James Harden trade and the Thunder took a step back, but still, they reached the Western Conference Finals in 2014 before losing to the Spurs, and of course, in 2016, the Thunder would fall apart and lose a 3 one series lead to the Warriors in a series that saw Russ shoot 28 for 76 in the final three losses. Good for a 37% shooting percentage and to add a cherry on top here, he also averaged five turnovers a game in those final three losses. And so, because of this and because of the ball dominant play style we all know so well, Kevin Durant left the Thunder and the blame was thrown directly at Russ. This playoff disaster combined with Kevin Durant leaving planted the seeds for the Russell Westbrook camp win a title hype train, seeds that just grew and grew after the Thunder lost in the first round of the playoffs the next three seasons, and now, bombshell report from our colleagues Woj and McMahon. Something is up in Houston. They are hearing that their two former MVP All-Stars, both Russell Westbrook and James Harden, are a little uncertain. Uncertainty about the direction of the franchise. They're a little uneasy of what's going on down there. James have not been answering the phone for the ownership or the front office or even Coach Silas for the over for about two weeks now. It sounds like it's time for Houston to move on. Yes, the hate for Russell Westbrook's game has officially reached an all-time high because after a Houston Rockets season that was full of ups and downs, a season that finished with a serious down, we are now at a point where plenty of teams in the NBA not only do not want Russell Westbrook on their roster, but some teams seriously view him as a negative asset. This is a man who from 2017 to 2019 averaged a triple-double for three straight seasons. This is a man who was an MVP. This is a man who put up 27.2 points, 7.9 rebounds, and 7 assists a game during the 2020 regular season while shooting 47% from the field. On paper, you would think that teams would be lining up to trade for Russ, but in reality, teams are running away. Whether that is fair or not, well, that's what we're going to look at today. Because when asking yourself the question, do you really want Russell Westbrook on your team? Next question. You need to think of two main questions. The first question we'll answer now, and the second, well, that'll take a bit to get to, but trust me, stick around, it's worth it. That said, the first question is simply, as a team, do I want to win a championship? That's a good question. Um, not sure. A question that most people think is an easy yes, but for some teams, it isn't. Some teams aren't really concerned with a championship. Some teams' goal is to simply make the playoffs and sell tickets. The NBA is a business, and if that is your goal, if you want more hype on your team, then sure, trade for Russell Westbrook. He has proven to be a player who can dominate games, rack up absurd stats in the regular season, and lead his team to the playoffs. The problem, of course, comes back to the question, as a team, do you really think Russell Westbrook can win you a championship? 
championship. That is what most teams are going to want out of a max contract player like Russ. So let's dive into that. Because playing for the Houston Rockets this season, I think we can all agree that Russ was in a very strange situation. Because not only was this a Rockets team that tried to win games with PJ Tucker as their center, but going further than that, I think that the very second Russ was traded to the Houston Rockets, he was destined to fail. And to be honest, I don't think this is necessarily his fault. The obvious problem that was right in front of us for this trade was that of course, Russ and James Harden are both extremely ball dominant players. In the 2019 regular season, when they both had their own teams, Russ had a usage percentage of 30.9, a good for 10th in the NBA, while Harden had a usage percentage of 40.5, which ranked first. This immediately rose some serious red flags. However, people did try to talk themselves into a potential pairing because we have seen it work before with two ball dominant stars. In the 2010 season, the year before LeBron and Dwayne Wade teamed up, LeBron had a usage percentage of 33.5, which ranked second in the league, while Wade, well, he had a percentage of 34.9, which ranked, drum roll please, First, the key difference here in the Rockets pairing versus the Heat's pairing lies in two factors. The first was that as soon as LeBron joined the Miami Heat, even though this was Dwayne Wade's franchise at the time, even though he had already been there for years, Wade openly deferred to LeBron and knew he was going to be the second option on this team. The second factor in play here is that because of this, the Heat were able to construct their team in a way where LeBron could be the number one option without any hard feelings. This was incredibly important, especially when it came down to crunch time in the closing moments of close games. Four on the shot clock. He made it. Green guarding clock at four. James steps into a jumper. And rattles it in. Adier gets it in. Here's James on the drive. win. Down to five. Down to three. Make somebody else beat you. Three on the way. He got it. And so we can see that because one player was fine with not needing the spotlight, two ball dominant stars like LeBron and Dwayne Wade could coexist. Sacrifices were surely made by both guys here, but at the end of the day, if you have two stars like this, one guy is going to have to sacrifice more, and Wade was okay with that. Meanwhile, in Houston, that was never the case. Even if Russ and Harden said at first that they could adjust their games and work well together, at the end of the day, it was clear that neither of these guys were ever going to want to be the second player on the Houston. Houston Rockets. This was James Harden's team, he did not want to give it up, and as for Russ, he had been conditioned to be the guy on his team for years at this point, and did not want to be the second option. If you want proof of this, we have it right here with the fact that Russ wants out of Houston because he wants to join a team where he can be the main guy. Actually, scratch that, Russ does not just want to be the main guy, he wants a similar situation to his prior role with the Thunder, a role where he finished with a usage percentage of 38.37, good for fourth all time in 2015 when Kevin Durant was injured, and with a usage percentage of 41.65 in 2017, good for the most in NBA history. This needs to be emphasized, because when handed the keys to the offense, not only is Russell Westbrook a ball dominant player, but he had a season where he was historically the most ball dominant player we have ever seen. And so finally, that brings up the second big question we have to ask. Next question. Because if you are trading for Russell Westbrook with the belief that he is a player that can win you a championship, you need to ask yourself, is this man capable of really adjusting his game? And the answer to that is possibly more complex than most people give it credit. For. As it stands right now, Russ has played with three true stars in their primes. We already spoke about KD in the beginning of this video, and again, Russ was a winner with KD. In fact, if a few things broke a different way, if a few more shots go in during some key games, the Thunder very easily could have won a championship with Russ as their second star. But that did not happen, and so as we've said, the hate grew and only got stronger when OKC was bounced in the first round with Paul George on their team two years in a row. Now, was this Russ's fault? Yes. The answer is yes. PG played fine in the playoffs. I wouldn't necessarily say he stepped up big time in 2018, but in 2019, he averaged about 28 and a half points per game and shot around 44%. Meanwhile, in 2018, Russ was outdueled by a rookie, Donovan Mitchell, which was simply unacceptable. And then in 2019, he shot five for 21 in game four against the Blazers in a 13 point loss, then 11 for 31 in a three point series deciding game five. For the series in 2019 against the Blazers, Russ averaged 22.8 points per game on 30 36% shooting while Dame, he averaged 33 points per game on 46% shooting and dropped 50 points in the Blazers' three-point game five win. Lillard, long range three.
somewhere Paul George is still saying that was a bad shot because of shots like this though and because he has been outplayed by other point guards in the playoffs recently I think the criticism towards Russ's game is completely justified when it comes to playoff performance at the end of the day the NBA is a what have you done for me lately league and lately Russ has not done a whole lot and the problem simply is that the man refuses to adjust his game come playoff time teams sag off him on offense a tremendous amount the Lakers this year dared Russ to shoot a jumper every single time down the floor and he simply could not do it that is not a shot he can make consistently and I don't know why that is still the case seriously Russ shot 26% from three this season a massive regression from the 2017 season where he shot 34% on more three-point attempts if there is one thing Russ needs to be doing as he grows older he needs to be working on his three-point shot he needs to get that percentage up is this a case of his own ego getting in the way here is this a case where he thinks he can succeed without a three-point shot we of course will never know the true answer to that but it seems like it and this brings us back to the ultimate question can Russell Westbrook change his game to fit in with a winning roster and personally I believe from everything we have seen the answer is just a straight no as soon as Russ was handed the keys to the offense for the Thunder without Durant he was unleashed in a way that again was historic and I don't think there's any coming back from that not with a guy like Russ to be fair I do think at times Russ has shown flashes of trying to adjust his game but when it comes down to the playoffs or just the end of close games in general most of the time Russ reverts back to his usual style of play he wants to be the guy he wants to be the one putting up the shots that win his team the game and he doesn't really compromise in that manner now I will say the fit with Harden was never going to work it made no sense but with that in mind what fit will work you look at someone like Jimmy Butler and sure he wants to be the guy on that team but he wants to be the guy in terms of being a leader Jimmy is perfectly fine with someone like Tyler Hero getting the spotlight on any given night in fact Jimmy loves to see that he was the one hyping up Tyler the most when Tyler went off in this year's playoffs that no matter what he says is not what Russ wants he wants a team that is built around him and that will only really succeed if Russ plays at a superstar level as we've seen when it comes to the playoffs when teams adjust to his games and back off and give him space Russ has not been able to get it done and as they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks and at this point Russ is 32 years old and I think he's only going to be happy when the offense completely revolves around him so if I was a team that wanted to build a contender I would not pursue Russell Westbrook the proof for why is right there in front of us so there you have it guys thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed today's video I want to know what you think about Russ down below in the comments also like I said before I'm going to be making so many videos next week make sure to subscribe and turn post notifications on so you don't miss a single video and if you did enjoy today's video make sure to leave a like it helps me out a ton if you're already subscribed thank you so much for supporting you're awesome we all know it and as always have an awesome day guys and cue that music but before we continue guys i do want to say thank you to finomize for sponsoring today's video now are you someone who's always wanted to start investing but you don't really know where to start if that is the case then finomize has you covered guys they will teach you how to start investing like a pro because finomize is an app that includes all of the information and tools that you're going to need to start investing with confidence it has daily morning briefings audio and text investment guides exclusive interviews and more then on top of all of that the premium insight section breaks down trends opportunities opportunities and strategies that are all designed to help you invest. And there's even a community section where you can talk to others about investments. I love this feature because it allows everyone to learn from each other and have some awesome conversations. Interacting with other people who are also learning is always a way for both of you to get better. So if you are interested, Finomize is also hooking us up. Right now, if you click the Finomize link in my description, you will get a free seven day trial and then 20% off a yearly subscription after that. That is an amazing offer, guys. Trust me, click the link right now, download Finomize, and start investing. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. Make sure to click on one of them. Again, I know you're gonna love it. And other than that, have a great day and peace.